Hey everyone, so welcome back to another episode of Hello Spring. I am your host, Spring Sims, or Steven. But for today's episode, it's going to be an extra special one because I have brought on a guest this time around because I think it's definitely important to get another insight from another point of view. And so I've brought on Ocean Sims, who is a talented, down-to-earth content creator on YouTube who makes Sims content, but she's also a mother of three and a wife. And as a viewer, she has a very calming voice that draws you into her content wanting to learn more about her sims playthrough what she does how she creates them but especially kind of relate to them as well so she is definitely the real deal and all of her links will be down below in the show notes below so you can go check her out on youtube and twitter but either way let's go ahead and hop into the episode Ocean, thank you so much for being on my podcast today. I'm so excited to be able to kind of just talk to you and interview you and just kind of just kind of play catch up on everything of what's been happening with you and the Sims and all that jazz. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I've like I've been playing this podcast for so long that I feel like you have such knowledge and like insight of what it's like being a content creator, you know, a mom, a wife, making videos every every single day or just <laughs> doing day-to-day -day life. It's it's you just have a lot. I think people should hear about this, honestly. Oh my God. I love that you focused on me being like a mom and a wife because that is like my first main priorities in life. So to for you to like acknowledge that part just means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cause when when I started this like idea of the podcast and like and just in general, I didn't want it to be like a dedicated Sims podcast because once you box yourself in, you can't really get out and you feel stuck. And I think a lot of people should understand that we are real live human beings and we have lives yes. and, <laughs> and we do different things. Yeah, no problem. The first thing I wanted to know is, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, my name is Ocean Sims, but... That's not my, um, a lot of people call me Ocean, but my real name is Marissa. So not a lot of people know that. <laughs> they just call me Ocean, but I'm cool with it. So y'all can keep calling me Ocean. And I, um, I've been creating since 2018. And yeah, I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh no, you're all good. You're all good. <laughs> it's so hard to talk about myself because no one ever really asks about me. It's so hard. Um, I'm a mom of three boys and a wife. I've been married since 2014. I did everything backwards, like, you know, had kids, then got married, then found my passion at a super, you know, late part in life. But yeah. I mean, honestly, I like that. That's a, that's a story. You like, you have a story to you. And that's awesome. Thank you. Where did the, like, name Ocean Sims, like, become to be? Like, how did you decide to name it that? Oh, my goodness. So... Uh, Janae Aiko is my favorite like artist and around like 2017 I went through this phase where I like I call it like my enlightening like enlightenment mm -hmm. type of phase um, where I kind of found my truth and so I during that phase I was like obsessed with the ocean because an ocean is free flowing it has depth but it's also it also has like shallow waters and it's it just flows everywhere and I just thought that was an analogy of who I was at that time and so I had like a, a YouTube a channel before where it was just about me and myself and my kids and stuff like that. And it was, mm -hmm. I put the name Ocean Riz and I spelt it the way Ocean's supposed to be spelt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the way that I kind of came up with Ocean, the way it's spelt as you see it is because I'm super obsessed with Japanese culture. So I was like, you know, I don't want my name to be just Ocean Sim. So I changed it. I changed the spelling, but it's still supposed to mean like ocean so essentially ocean sand ah uh, see yeah. that's really cool because when you said japanese culture i'm like yeah looking at her channel yeah Snow escape <laughs> like she loves that vibe she's I all did. here for it <laughs> yes and when i like you know how your name you have like spring sims you have urban sims i just slapped sims on the end of it and just i followed you guys as lead i was like i'm just gonna put sims up there because <laughs> that's yeah <laughs> it was the norm <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. I was like, hmm, how can how can I make it so that you guys know that I play Sims? So I just slapped it up there with Ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was scrolling through the interwebs on Twitter because that's pretty much where everyone's at. And I was like, what was our first DM? Like, oh. what was it? 
because I remember like you asked me about like streaming, streaming, yes, like YouTube <laughs> or Twitch, and I just said Twitch because Twitch is easier, it's more relaxed and comfortable. Whereas like with YouTube, it's like all your audience is there and they all know you, and I feel like it's kind of overwhelming when everyone knows you on one platform. Whereas yeah. like you go to another platform. Some people might know you, but I feel like it's just more relaxed to me. No, I don't know. that is that is a very, very true. I remember I asked you because I wanted to like dip and dabble in a streaming. When I actually did a Twitch stream, it do, it feels like Twitch is for the creator. I don't know yeah. how to describe it. You know what I mean? And so I am like, I am not at a streamer mindset right now because it, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. Like, how do you do it? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's a lot. Streaming is definitely a lot to handle. I do have anxiety even before I press the go live button every single time because I get so anxious of like what's going to happen. Yeah. Usually like there's <laughs> stream technical issues in the midst of streaming and it's kind of crazy to kind of handle it on the fly. Right. It's like it's live. Like my biggest fear was, I think when I did my Twitch stream, I think I said like, one curse word, and I don't usually like curse in my videos or anything like that. And I, it just slipped up. It was like one of the small ones, not anything crazy. And I was like, oh, my God, this is live. <laughs> I can't yeah. do this anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got so nervous, you know, like it's, it's live. But I feel like once you get into it, like I love your streams. I love oh, them. You don't you. seem anxious at all. <laughs> <laughs> I play the extroverted card very well, I would say, on on like the Internet. But I'm a very introverted, anxious person. And I mean, I tell people that because I f- feel like a lot of people can relate to it and nothing's picture perfect. All, nothing's really, you know, all happy dory. Like there are yeah, days where I'm just fun. like not feeling the best or and I want to share that with people because I think it's just it's much easier than like showing one side of a person saying all things are good. Nothing's really bad. And um, people just need to understand that, you know, streaming's not that easy. It's uh, definitely a task that you have to handle Take it one step at a time and kind of play it by ear and kind of learn as you go. That is so truthful that this feels like therapy. And I'm going to tell you why, because (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I built this image, right, where I am all about positivity. I am about those things and I'm generally a happy person. But I, like you said, we are human. And so I do have bad days. I do have those days. And because I am extroverted online, but actually introverted IRL, like in Mm -hmm. real life, I feel like I have to almost fake like that sadness because I feel like if I put out how I really feel or if I'm having an off day, it might not stand for what my brand is, which is positivity, you know, zen, calm, peace. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, yeah, that is a very, very true. So to know that you feel the same way, even when, because you're like really, really happy and you have such, (laughs) you like your whole brand is just yellow, happy sunlight. I would never think you had an off day. But I know that you you do. But yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think I express how I feel on social media, like just Twitter, but mm-hmm. not in my videos. Because I feel like I want to separate that because I want exactly. to be to make sure that when people come to my channel, it's like a place where they feel safe and, you know, happy or just want to have some type of like relaxation downtime where they don't have to stress the entire time. But Twitter yeah. is like a whole other story because that's a lot. <laughs> It is. It is. That's where I feel like I am. And that's where I feel like um, on Twitter, it's a definitely different energy. I feel like when I go back on my YouTube channel and I look at my comments and everything, it's it's all positivity. It's all like good stuff. And on my Twitter is where I, I'm a little bit more expressive mm-hmm. with like what's going on. So yeah, I understand like keeping the two separated. Yeah. Yeah. And like with Twitter, they have that same old message is like, what's happening? And I think it, it kind of in, like <laughs> inclines people to tell what's actually happening, which kind of <laughs> a lot of people go on tangents, Mo- mainly me. I tend to tweet rant. Not anymore since I deleted the app off of my phone. Right. See, that's that's what I did too. And I need to be more mindful, I think, of how I worry things because on Twitter, you only have a certain amount of characters to say how you feel. It can get really, you can pass your energy to people just by expressing like the kind of day you had. Like I could be having a great day and see that you had a terrible day. And then all of a sudden I'm reminded that something terrible happened. And then that room, it's just weird. It's, it's energy. And um, after, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> after deleting the app from my phone too, I was like, I, I felt lighter. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It It's definitely like 
it feels much easier because I know that we, I tweeted like a, a long bunch of tweets about how I was feeling and just like Twitter or just like social media in general is like very toxic because it's just that side of like the internet that you don't really understand until like you kind of go deeper into it, which you don't want to get into. I know. It's like, you don't even want to go there. God, I, I feel like I've, I, yeah, uh-uh. it's, it's hard. And I think like the, the state of the world right now is affecting mm-hmm. it so much more because when I first came to Twitter, even just social media in general, it was so fun. Now I find myself not wanting to share as much of myself online anymore, just because of the judgment that's out there, the way that it's so like people can quickly respond to you and have mm-hmm. no remorse. Like it's crazy to think, like, I'm so glad our parents like, were, like imagine if our parents are raised during that time. Like, Oh my God. You know, it's crazy. Like I'm, I'm glad that we were young and and we enjoyed our childhood because a lot of a lot of like children and everything too are on social media now. It's just the way the world is. It's yeah, scary. it is definitely scary. Because like when I used to go out and stuff, I'm like, why? Why does a five year old have an iPad? I don't understand. They don't need it. Like at all. Like that could have waited. It's it's so weird. It's like that's the generation. It's yeah, and it, it's like more of like norm, and I and I think nowadays yeah. it's understandable. Like I can now understand why they need certain things, mm-hmm. just like to calm down, settle, be more like productive, learning. There's apps out there. Like it's so much more convenient and more helpful. I would say on the learning side of things, the reason why they yeah. have these things. So I, I agree. I have to say, parents are the true MVPs. Like you, your husband <laughs> are doing great. I mean. Since you don't share a lot, what what you do share, I think that you are an amazing parent. Your husband's an amazing parent. We'll talk about this later, but I think that <laughs> from I like I think you you and your husband had a YouTube channel before together. We did. Yeah, and we actually have a like we had a channel before together, and now we have one where we we're gaming together and just doing like you know silly stuff together. Um, yeah. That's where I don't know if you've seen it, but it's called the Go Arcade, and so that's where we're just kind of like playing games I'm a totally different person I realize when I'm filming with him I am a completely <laughs> different person and I, I just want to let anyone know that ch- checks out that YouTube that I'm still me but just you know like different people bring out different sides of you that's yeah. like my best friend that's my yeah. best friend <laughs> you two have great chemistry together it's like when I see you two, I'm like oh they look so happy Aww. I feel so excited I'm like wait they look so amazing and doing so great but I remember Thank that one episode, that one video. I think it was Cyberpunk. You were you were out. Oh my god, we were just I'm out. So busy. <laughs> I was like, at first, I was like, at first, I was like, I do not want you to post that. But then I thought, you know what? Like, I don't care. Like at first, I did not want him to post that. But I fell asleep. Oh my goodness, it's all good. Human things. You fall right? asleep. Well, I I did want to go back to the first impressions type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember your Charlie Ann series. Oh my god, <laughs> I missed her. Wow, you remember? Yeah, I you know, I did my research and I I adore that series. Like it was really you know, good. That means so much because that was actually like I don't even know where I can't. I watch a lot of Netflix, and so I feel like I probably watched something and then I it, got, it made me inspired to create that LP. And at the time, I really didn't know what went into like content creation, all of that stuff. I didn't understand like when you create a story based LP like that, it's mm-hmm. hard work keeping up with it. So I hate that I let that go. But I love that. That was inspired around that time. I was watching you, um, <sighs> Fantasia, a lot of like of those like storytelling type of mm-hmm. simmers and you bring up Charlie Ann but I remember when I found you you were playing like it, Jungle Adventures came out and you had those two siblings like they were oh like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I was inspired from all of that when I created Charlie Ann I don't even know what happened to that series I started it we and never I don't know what happened <laughs> it's like I start something and I get so paranoid and all of my head and then I stop things I don't know why anymore I just I think I just stopped kind of doing generic LPs where either it's like story based or pack based. I'm like, I need to have some type of idea in my head where I continue on doing it and I can enjoy it for a long time. But I don't know. I think all the series I've made, I've enjoyed every single last one of them. But it was just like something in that moment that Mm -hmm. just didn't feel right. But I think it was also on top of like me being in school, which just did not help. Oh my Um, God, yeah. 
<laughs> so I just stopped everything completely. It's been like a year and a half since I've done an actual Let's Play. Oh my goodness. Do you think you would ever do a Let's Play again? Like, do you think you would ever, like, even if it's not story-based, like something like how you did Not So Berry for a little bit, like, do you think you'd do a challenge or something? Yeah, I think I'll like eventually come back and do like maybe challenges or something. I mean... I'm working on like a machinima right now for my cats and dogs LP that I had so many years ago. And I s- didn't stop it. I just ended it where it needed to end. And I want to bring them back because I'm kind of going back from like their past to the present of all the events that have happened since the ending of the first season. So. Oh my goodness. You said cats and dogs. You had a cats and dog LP and you're going to bring it back? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not going to name it cats and dogs. It's uh, Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's called The Larson Life. Oh, um, The Larsons. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm going to catch up. Like I'm Nina catch up Larson. I don't, yeah. I, I'm oh just... God. I think because like the thing is, I when I did videos back in like the early days of YouTube, Mm -hmm. like back in like 2010, I made all these like different series. And then one of me and my friend, we had made a Sims 2 machinima called Remember Me. And it's not based off of the actual movie with Robert Pattinson, Remember Me. It's like more so following these two teenagers, Autumn and Tyler, which I still have the Sims for, which is very weird. It's been like... I don't know, like nine years or so, but wow! and it falls along these two teenagers, high school drama. And at the the time, YouTube and Sims was like all about teenage pregnancy, drama, (laughs) storytelling. It was, it was just insane. It was, it was. And and I think what me and my friend wanted to do is like, we wanted to kind of do that, but didn't want to make it so focused on all of that. Because if you can focus on one thing, it's like. It's not really what you need. And Autumn, teenage pregnancy, she had two kids. We didn't end up finishing it just because time constraints and schedules and stuff. So we just didn't finish it. But we were writing a book. It's not even done. Um. Goodness. (laughs) You guys, do you still talk to this friend? Like, do they, do you guys ever bring that up? Like, remember that one time? (laughs) It's been a while, I think. Six years since I've last talked to that person. I mean, she was older than I am. So Mm -hmm. she was in high school. I was like in junior high. So it was like age difference, schedule difference, all that stuff. So it didn't really like fall through in the end, but we were really good friends. But, you know, hey, we let that chapter rest and, you know, just move on. But I still have that series near and dear to my heart. And I I think that's what kind of made me who I am today is like a storyteller, being Mm -hmm. able to share these stories that are like the norm, but not really the norm. I love that. That's what I want to get back to because I feel like because the actual platform on YouTube with Sims videos has changed, like people are saying LPs like with storytelling aren't in anymore. Like some people are saying that. And um, I want to get back to that. Like the creativity, like actually sitting down, like, I don't know, really just taking the story level, like the storytelling to the next level. Like, have you heard other people say that, that Sims 4 LPs are going out of style? Like yeah. Ones, you know, and I want to just, for the, just for the sake of the era, like the era that we were yeah. in. Yeah. I feel like we just need to go back to that side because there's been so many like, things out there on YouTube with like Sims Wise that have been so great. And when I hear like LPs are dying, like, no, they're not. But I'm like, I know I want to cry. <laughs> but it somewhat kind of is, but it's not. And yeah. back then, I think like 2015, 2016, there were so many LPs that were so story based, which is LPs in general. Like I remember watching like Jen, all of like actually literally her, her entire channel is just absolutely amazing. I, yes. Oh my God. I remember like, uh, I think, Corey, St- I forget what the name was, but I remember the Springstons. I remember yes. the the uh, Foremans. I just remember all those like Chloe's families. Story. Chloe's Chloe, story was that's what. so good. Yes, I all of those were so good. I feel like when I found like storytelling simmers like Urban and then like you two and Fantasia, like you guys actually cared about your sims in a way that didn't make me feel crazy I was like wow they really care about their sims to really tell their story that was like intense like there's different yeah. types of storytelling but when I found you guys I was like oh my gosh like they really care about their sims and their lives and <laughs> they're invested I'm invested now I get so like teary-eyed because when they get older I'm like oh they're gonna be gone soon and I'm gonna have to tell this story and I'm gonna cry and 
Oh gosh, I'm just like I take so many screenshots of my Sims because I don't want to ref- I don't want to forget those moments in their lives where they were first born or when they're taking their first you know steps into yes. adulthood. I don't know. I'm so but guilty she- of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to clean up my my screenshot folder. It's a it's a mess. Oh, let's not talk about screen. I need to yeah. I need to purge. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, when I play challenges, that's a whole other story. I do not care about them because it's just, like, I do not have time to deal with their needs when I'm on a mission. Didn't you do, like, the 300 baby challenge or something crazy like that on Twitch? Like, 200 yeah. baby challenge? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't handle that. I could not handle their needs. I was just mainly focused on having all the babies and doing that and just playing it as I go. Because <laughs> children in The Sims, let alone toddlers, are just... Mm-hmm not ideal no they are too much they're too much <laughs> oh but story base i'm like okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and then all oh, will be fine <laughs> <sighs> that's like i wish we had like a proper like dedicated generations pack because that's what i personally need in all my storytelling gameplay i've done like I need to like have preschool. I need to have like daycare. I need yeah. all that stuff. That is literally what I feel like. Um, I feel like I know there's some people that don't really need the family gameplay or don't see it as an asset. But I feel like that's what drew me to The Simpsons like to begin with, even at a young age, that aspect of like the things you can do in your family and growing again, your generations of your family. You need those things. That is a goal in itself to, you know what I mean? take care of your kids and actually feel like you're fulfilling a life with them. Like I played some Sims three generations because I never um, experienced generations at the time when it came out. Mm -hmm. And what I love was that, you know, there was a focus even on the adult Sims, like they could go through a midlife crisis. Yeah. Like that's a part of the, you know, I want to feel those that I feel like that's what the Sims four is missing. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like, would you say like generations is your favorite part of the, the Sims? I would say, oh, you mean like The Sims as a whole? Well, like, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Okay, because if we're talking as a whole, okay, so because um, I played Generations literally like for the first time not too long ago, like probably like last year, no, 2019, because again, my laptop, when The Sims 3 came out, I couldn't really play it. Oh, yeah, so, same. Yeah, so I love it and I appreciate it when people talk about it. I like hands down give it, you know, my utmost respect. But Sims 2... Specifically, Sims Two Seasons and Nightlife. Ooh. That those are my babies. One hundred percent, I yeah. agree. Yes, those are my babies. Those are like untouchable. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Sims Two, hands down. Yeah, one of the best things I've ever played in my entire life. I go back to it all the time. We do. I play in Pleasant View. <laughs> but I think that's like also the other thing. What keeps me going, like going back to the Sims, is of course, like Sims 2 is like my OG, my nostalgia thing that I've always played and I'll go back mm-hmm. to it no matter what. But I think it's like kind of what I lived and I played is why the reason why I keep going back to The Sims 4 and like still playing it and still like kind of giving it that sense of like character and personality that I used to play when I was younger, you know? Yeah, I agree with that because like as much as I love The Sims 2, I think because The Sims 4 is what's presently out, um, mm-hmm. I struggle just... Like, I love The Sims 2 for what it is, but I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy The Sims 4 because there are ways you can make it fun. Like, it's not a Sims 2 and it's definitely not a Sims 3, but it's what it is. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, like, I like for instance, one day um, I went back and played Sims 2 and I forgot that we couldn't multitask in Sims 2. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. And so... (laughs) Yeah, so I was like, you know, there are certain things in Sims 4 that I'm just used to now. So, but I always appreciate like the older games for what they were. I love them, but I like you said, I try to put that same flair and personality in the present day Sims yeah. 4. Yeah. It's like that going back to the Sims 2, I forget there's like small little details that I remember but don't like remember cuz I was so young then like wait, we had all these little small little details that I did not know. Like yeah. I remember There was like two interactions that I remember and I love is that when kids come home from school, from the school bus, they get off, look at the report card. And if a parent is home and they have a good report card, they'll jump up and down with excitement and go run to their parent to show them what they got. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
Or like when a parent comes home from work and a kid's at home, they'll literally stop what they're doing to go run to their parent and hug them. Like that. I remember that. Yes. Oh, God. I, it just melts my heart. I just, I love those small little details that we've had. And I think what makes The Sims 4 The Sims 4 is that it's like a fresh new game. It's a new era. It's a new way of playing life. And you got to make it fun for you and kind of discover your own like happy medium. Yeah, I think that's exactly that's exactly what it is. I feel like The Sims 4 definitely gives the player, I think, the most control, but that's not necessarily always the best because sometimes we want those autonomous things like, you know, like the child jumping up and jo- up and down to see the parent and, yeah. you know, giving their report card, just seeing that happen autonomously. It's like we were playing life, but it was also it felt like they were really alive in that world. And when mm-hmm. in Sims 2 and 3, it just felt like they were actually alive. And in Sims 4, it feels like we're we're essentially like almost like a god in a weird way. Like we control everything. It's like playing. Yeah. And so I do miss like that autonomous just reaction. And But like, so I understand what you mean when you say Sims 4 is just a new way of playing. That's just how the game is now. I yeah. Yeah. And I mean, of course, like there's mods and stuff out there that kind of enhance it and make it, you know. Totally. People say better or like, or just different or just not helpful. Um, but I think with like mods, it just, it's, it's okay to have. But I think the idea is like sometimes you just don't need mods for anything to just yeah. have fun. Like for me, I I've been it. trying to play a little bit vanilla because you've been oh. playing vanilla. So I'm like, ooh. I want to try oh, that. I would love if you posted more of your vanilla gameplay. I feel like that would be interesting because I'm not going to lie. You are like, you know, custom content king. You are <laughs> like very, um, I would love to see you just play with like no mods, no CC, no anything. I think that would be very interesting. I would literally just watch that for hours. Yeah, because I, I, I definitely want to do it. I I don't know if I need to go back to my old save because there, I have an old save. I do have an all vanilla save that I've been playing for I would say about since Dine Out came out. Whoa. I've been, yeah. <laughs> and I've posted here and there of them. They're called um De Luso. That's their last name. They're an Italian slash German family based in Windenburg. And I'm currently on generation four or five, I think. And I haven't posted about them in so long just because there's so many packs coming out and so many different things happening. And then the show happened that I just couldn't really like, do it all. And like, I didn't lose interest in it. I just didn't really know what, how to, I'm going to expand onto it. Cause I think at the time the vampire pack came out and I was like always thinking, how can I introduce this pack into my family gameplay? Oh. And I was like, wait, what, am, what if, like back in like the 1600s, they were, you know, they had a vampire in the family and kind of the generation of the vampire, like blood didn't run to the family until the most recent generation. And that's your your storytelling coming out. You're like improvising right there on the spot. (laughs) Yeah. Cause like, I mean, I have it, I have the sim already like as a vampire and like the family doesn't know. And I think when the child got older, they were trying to figure out why does my child burn in the sun? Why does he did not like the light? Why is he, you know, doing all these different things that his siblings don't do? And they had to go back to like their family books and look at, wait a minute, back in the 1600s, we had a vampire in the family. Like our great, 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 great grandfather was a vampire. But how did like, we like not not pass down to like me or somebody else, but only this child. And so they like, are kind of going back and like figuring out things, how they can make it better. So they're going to go talk to Vlad and kind of get some insight. No way. That means you, that means that you would have to give Vlad an, a makeover. Oh yeah. <laughs> again. Cause oh my God. yes. Again. Cause Oh my God. That's so interesting. And one thing that you said, like, you know, you had to kind of think how you could incorporate the vampires pack at that time into, you know, your, you said dine out was kind of like where they originated from. Yeah. Yeah, so it's funny because I feel that pressure too. Like when a pack comes out, if I'm enjoying a family, all of a sudden something comes out, you really feel the pressure to add the new pack and integrate it into your current household. Like, And yeah. that is very witty. That is hard to do. It definitely is. <laughs> that is hard to do. It's like, it is, I'm like I don't even know how I'm going to make this work because I'm not particularly like a big fan of supernatural, like anything in The Sims. <laughs> like The Sims 2 Vampires, not for me. Sims 3, mm-hmm. 
it was okay. I enjoyed some of them, but but Sims 4, I, I don't know. I just think, well, just in general, I actually just don't like Supernatural at all because it's just not the norm and it's not my plain style per se. Same. Like I can be open to it and be like, okay, I'll check it out. But I think it's very evident what our playing style is. We like, you know, we, we just yeah. real, realism, you know, realistic. Yeah. But I do have to say the paranormal stuff pack though. Whew, Did you like it? I... I'm enjoying it. I really Yay. love it. I like it too. I, I'm not going to lie. I like speed ran through, like ran through it because I just was so anxious to, to understand why there's gameplay in a stuff pack. That really boggled my mind. But when I actually played, I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. The lights flickering, the effects, the sound effects were trippy. Yeah. Definitely very creepy because people were hinting things and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think I did like the whole I think what sold me was like the backstory of like the like the whole idea of like the Godry and Bone Hilda oh and then Tempira. The backstory what sold me the most because I knew I wanted to learn more about them and like why is Godry the way he is? Who's like this other Tempira person? Why is she here? Like what's really going on? Like I kind of go deeper into it when there's really like no deeper meaning to it. But I love that because I feel like we need more of that. Like, for instance, Paranormal is obviously supernatural. The Strangerville game pack is supernatural as well. But because it has such like a storyline kind of already embedded, that type of gameplay yeah. really makes it so that we can take it that extra mile and and like really like try to come up with the the grand idea, the grand scheme of things. I really wish they would do that with more packs. Have a story. Me too. You know, even with expansions, if just a part of the pack always includes some type of background, some type of lore to it oh yeah I love definitely that. i would love some lore mm-hmm. and like s- just something that will sustain me long enough where i can like go off onto my own and make it a thing yeah like build off of it yeah so the next question i wanted to ask like since you kind of said like why you started like making content like like me jen and like you know fantasia and everybody making sims content like what really sold you like to make sims content because making youtube videos is like do literally anything and everything but like what really really made you want to make sims content like kind of stick with it i think what made me want to stick with it is i love the feeling that i got one from watching you know simmers like you guys and Mm -hmm. i love that you know by myself playing the game, I talk to myself anyway. Like, I'll be in my head and I'll be like, yep, mm-mm, you're terrible. You're cheating on your wife. Like, I'm talking out loud to myself anyway. So I'm like, wow, if I can do this with other people and they actually understand me. Because before, playing The Sims was, like, taboo. You didn't... I never really oh. talked about that, you know, with my friends in school. No one really did it. I only met one girl that actually played The Sims also. And we vibed about that. But it was like I kind of felt embarrassed to say, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I play Sims. Like, no one did that at the time. And so I just wanted to mention to, like, I wanted to make someone feel the way that I felt when I watched your videos. And you know, Jen and mm-hmm. Fantasia, everyone, I wanted to make people feel like that. I want to share my stories and talk about it. I think the best part about creating content is talking about it with the people. You know, that's, yeah. like, my favorite part. Like, when people get immersed in what I have going on and they give me suggestions, like, you should make this person do this. It's really fun when you kind of can share your passion with people in that way so that's that was like my main reason why i just wanted to go for it that's good because i think that's the kind of the same way of me growing up of like i wanted to be able to share like my passion for what i'm doing or like just like in general and see what people think because i think sharing is caring and i think people can like kind of somewhat relate to it in a way of like we all play sims or we kind of resonate with that one story that they told or that certain sim looks like me or or something like that. And I think that's kind of what makes the sims the sims, you know? Yeah, I feel like that's like the best part about it too. Because even just watching other people, like I realized that I became more diverse the more I put myself out there. Like diversity is very important to me. But, you know, yes. when you first start playing The Sims, you don't really, you are, you're only limited to a certain amount of ideas. But when you see other people exploring certain stories and certain storylines, it actually made me like less fearful to explore that too. So it's like, yeah. it's so interesting how that works. Like just by watching other people, you just suddenly feel inspired in your own game, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like getting inspiration or like just watching other people, it's definitely, it makes you like think a certain way. I'm like, wow, they told that story. I think I can also tell that story too, but in my own way. Right, that's exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I think what also comes down to like making content, just like in general, or like just for the Sims, I think it's hard sometimes to kind of think of new ideas and make new content that's like, you know, fresh and new and exciting and just trying to figure out how you're going to upload and how you're going to make these thumbnails and these Sims. And it's definitely (laughs) a lot. Would you say like you have had struggles like since making YouTube videos just like for Sims or just in general? Oh, definitely. I feel like I've struggled with knowing where I fit in. What type of video, Mm -hmm. what type of creator am I? Am I someone that does mod reviews or am I someone that does it all? Mod reviews and gameplay and creative some videos and builds. You kind of feel like you have to dip and dabble into everything. And then at some point, which is where I am now, you realize like you're not for everybody. So if I'm not a builder, you know, I can explore with building, but I don't have to make that my channel just because it's in right now. So I kind of learned, yeah. yeah, I learned that way. Like, just be yourself. Make the content you want to make. Um, and then I also struggle with thumbnail styles. Like, my thumbnail style would change probably almost every three months. Almost to where, you know, it's like yeah. unrecognizable. You're like, oh, I did that thumbnail? That is not cute. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like you get better in time. And I think the best part about being a creator is you can keep experimenting. And over time, when you look back at, like, those, your archives of your videos and how you change, you're like, wow, like, being a creator is being open to evolution. Like you have to change. You have to change and accept that you have to change. And once I did that, like you have to be yourself, but you have to, in a way, help me explain this for it's, <laughs> you. <know? laughs> help me. I, I, I know what I'm trying to say, but like, I can't explain it. It's like, in a way, you have to be like yourself because when you're not yourself, you're like your true light really doesn't yeah. shine through your videos yeah. because no one wants to like, be someone like if you compare yourself to another person or you compare yourself and you just want to be just like them exactly the way they are you're not really showing like who you really are and it's hard to kind of it's just definitely hard to figure out how I'm go- like how you're going to do things exactly. and I think once you kind of take a step back and you kind of realize the situation of what's going on with like your channel or just yourself you think about okay I don't have to be like that person. I, I don't have to do make, you know, LP videos. Yes, I don't have to make mod reviews. Yeah, I can that's just exactly do what, I'm what I want. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. And I think it kind of boils down to like imposter syndrome. It okay, does. I read this article. It's like talks about like why like imposter syndrome like affects successful mm. people. And I read this thing, like this one quote from this one person. It's from like Mike Cannon Brooks is a co-founder of a Mm -hmm. software company. And he said, imposter syndrome is feeling well out of your depth, yet uh, already enriched in a situation, eternally feeling you're not skilled enough, experienced enough, or qualified enough to justify being there. But you are there and you have to figure out because we have to figure it out because you can't get out. It's more of a, a sensation of getting away from something and the fear of being discovered. Yeah. That definitely, I feel like we've all felt like that. Like, at yeah, one point it's, in time. it's definitely, yeah, hard. I totally feel that. Cause, like, in a way, there's, we go through life of making content, of we started out like, you know, all good and, you know, it's ourselves and we're doing our thing. But then I think the more that we grow as a person, the more like things kind of get into our head. And we're like, is this who I really am? Is this who I really want to be? do I have to be like this certain person? But in reality, you really don't. But I think our brains are just like telling us something completely different. And like with the YouTube algorithm Mm -hmm. and like YouTube studio Mm -hmm. tells you a whole other thing. It makes you, yeah, I feel like it makes you feel like you have to be what's in. You have to do what's trending. You have to do, um, you have to be what's in instead of just being like, you know, keeping your authentic self. I feel that on a whole nother level. I feel like I am, I feel like I will never be able to fully escape imposter syndrome because I feel like YouTube compares you to yourself. I mean, it's bad enough that you're comparing yourself to your peers, you know, but it compares you to yourself. It tells you that this video did great, but this one didn't. And you may have like really been proud of the video you just did and it just didn't do well. And that Mm -hmm. part is what gets me as a creator I don't think I'll ever be able to really escape it for too long feeling like I have to keep up or be trendy but recently though I've just been kind of keeping my peace and just doing what I feel is best because I feel like it's most fulfilling as a creator when you are proud of your work like the numbers matter but at the same time 
they can't matter all the time. Yeah, that's very true. It, it's definitely hard because I deleted the YouTube Studio app off my phone and I hardly ever look at my analytics nowadays because the one thing that's kind of hard to like figure out where you stand for your channel, like what where is like your videos ranking? Like it literally ranks your videos from one mm-hmm. to ten and all these videos are doing so great and you're doing awesome. Keep doing that same content. And it's like, no, I don't want to be boxed in into like that certain standard of content where I have to be keeping like making builds or, you know, just like all that stuff. Because when I look at mine, it's mainly just builds <laughs> <laughs> or like certain creative sims that have like a very unique idea of what I'm trying to do. And like there's one video that is still popular till this day that's on like number one hitting charts of my channel. It's a Sims 3 family build that I made oh my goodness. back in 2017. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, what made that build so good? I mean, Sims 3 probably and Suburban. Right. And then also was like multiple bedrooms. But I think also what I kind of did because I don't look back at the video because my voice was a whole other <laughs> it's story. It's the worst when you look back at, when you listen to old videos. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy, honestly, when you think about it. Um, but I think like what kind of resonated to people, I would say, is that I'm assuming I told a story in that video of who like who I think would live there and how they're all connected in a way, mm-hmm. I think. I don't know. But it's it was definitely a weird time back then where... It was just like, oh, just do this, do that. And it's like, I can't escape imposter syndrome Mm. either because it's like, how am I going to do all these things when one thing tells me one thing and another thing tells me another? Can I just be myself? (laughs) And then like YouTube says, no. Exactly. (laughs) It's like, if you... Um, you know that there are people that are are loyal and will watch you and love you regardless, but um, big major growth, sometimes you have to take yourself out of your element. And that's so uncomfortable because, yeah, it's like, why can't I just be yeah. myself? And it's crazy because it's almost like this is a therapy talking to you about it because this is not something we can just talk about with, you know, our friends or something like in real life. Yeah. You can't just be like, yeah, dad. Well, no, you can't talk to your parents. I, I do tell my parents some of this stuff. But <laughs> yeah, same. it's 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 crazy that you feel the same way too. The fact that you are like a bigger creator and you are on Twitch as well and you don't even check your analytics. Like I thought I was weird for doing that. But hearing that you also just try not to look at it either makes me feel like yeah. it actually makes me feel like I want to create right now. Like I actually feel empowered by it. I've heard <laughs> that you feel the same way that I feel when I log into YouTube. Yeah, because like I only look at it when it's like, necessary if like if I need to check for something like for if I do a sponsorship or or whatever I like look into it and I'm like okay it did this okay and sometimes it kind of hurts a little bit when a video doesn't perform well when I gave it my all I want to do a certain thing like it's hard to look at these numbers and it tells you like oh this this video did okay you shouldn't um not do it anymore or like when a video performs so well, it shoots confetti, makes you excited. And then like this video is doing really well for these certain mm-hmm. reasons. And it kind of makes you like, what really happened? Like what what really, what's going on here? Like did notifications not go out? Is the content just boring? Is it too long, too short? Like what is it? And it kind of makes you not want to make that content anymore And I think that's why I think certain people said like LPs are just dying in general, like certain things are dying because like YouTube goes into waves of like back in like 20, like, I don't know, 2010 or whatever. When it was like prime, it was all like saturation, excitement, bubbly, kid friendly, family friendly, all that stuff. And then like the second wave happened where it was like gaming or trying to like to figure yourself out. Like we were all in like an experimental phase of that side of YouTube. And then another wave happened where it's just like a reoccurring thing of it's not saturation anymore. But I think it's like also with the fact that was like YouTube was, it's always, it's always going through like waves of figuring out who you are, what you want to do and how you're going to get there. And I think now with YouTube and like all genres, it's like, just be your real authentic self. Exactly. 
because that's what people yeah, want. Yeah, I feel like you can't go wrong if you are just absolutely back against the wall. You can't go wrong with being yourself. And that advice is honestly reflected in, I think, even my recent like content, for example. That's just how I've been moving because everything's evolved. The community, YouTube, and everything. And I know that as a mom and wife, I'm so busy with that that I can't even put all that energy into figuring out what can make me grow faster. So just by being myself, that's all I've been doing. And I still see growth. You know, I'm not shooting with growth, Mm -hmm. but the fact that I see a little bit at a time still makes me feel good as a creator. And it makes me feel happy just mentally. So I 100% agree with that. Yeah. And I was scrolling through Twitter and I found this tweet that you said like, back in like on the 20th of February that my confidence as a, as a creator comes from my new theory. I'm not for everyone, but people that need me will find me and that's always be a good vibes. And I like that. Like you yeah. just have a <laughs> sense of relaxation and like depth to like your content or just like just you in general. Like the way you tweet has like a sense of depth, like a truer meaning. It's like, it makes you really Thank think. Thank you. Because... I, I I came across because I realized, you know, sometimes I try to I would try to be the more exuberant creator like, hey, guys, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, tr- I would try to do that and I would try to experiment with being more enthusiastic, try to make my videos shorter, trying to fit in again, put, putting myself in the box. But I realized like there are people out here that need that calm energy, people out here that just want to turn on a video and watch some relaxing gameplay like just I need to stay true to who I am and so no we may not be for everybody but the people that need us will find us because I just feel like that's how the universe works anyway you know so what goes around comes around so I just feel like if I put that energy out then I'll get it back and on my actual YouTube channel it is such a good like environment I don't experience any hate I don't experience anything negative I don't I mean it's almost like this euphoric area on the internet. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's like the same for you on Twitch and YouTube, but it just feels like on that actual platform, it's just like the same people, like like-minded people. Yeah, I kind of get that. Because like with Twitch, it's it's definitely a newfound platform for me. I'm still learning mm-hmm. as I go, but it's like the same people that show up. They're like we're all like-minded people and we all come for like the same thing. Like whether it's like for The Sims or just more for me. And mainly it's just like for me, which is so nice and reassuring to know that people come for me and not for a certain game I'm playing. Yeah. And it's like you don't want to be like box yourself in. But in hindsight, like it's hard because when you're a creator, but it's also simultaneously your business, you got to like still like make that same content more and more to like sustain yourself. But in reality, you don't want to like burn yourself out where you don't want to create it anymore. Exactly. And that that's like the important part. And that's why people like with you and a bunch of the other simmers that I watched around the time when I first found Sims YouTube, to see you guys like you guys are considered like legends, like like OGs to me in this in this like whole realm. So when I see you guys producing content and still being happy, like that's what keeps me moving. You know, seeing you not even change, but so much from when I first encountered, like when I first met you or spoke to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, you haven't really changed that much. And it's just like, you know, that shows me that I can be successful and I don't have to really change that much about myself. So why am I worried about it? You know, just do what I have, you know Yeah. I mean? Do what you have to do to kind of grow, experiment, but don't take you out of you. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't have to change for a certain person or a certain type of like content or anything. Like just being yourself is like literally yeah. enough. Totally. I still, I still am like surprised that you still love the color yellow. Like my, I'm a Gemini. So the co- my favorite color changes every like six months or so. Um, so oh. <laughs> like I changed my mind. <laughs> I've been loving blue for a while now. So yeah, people should mm. be proud of me. It's very but calming. You have been loving yellow. Thank you. That's why I, I was like, you know what? No, blue is my favorite color. But you, you've you been like a yellow lover since the day I even came across your YouTube. Because <laughs> <laughs> like for me, I, I like the color blue and I love yellow. But I think with yellow, it resonates more with like my personality and like who I am. Because like I'm a Pisces and I think with Pisces, they're like more on the creative side of things and like yeah. the experiment. And I don't know. I think it's just what I resonate more with. Yeah. You're definitely the sunflower of the Sims community. I'll tell you that. You are. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say. I'm like, oh, okay. I did find it funny. Me and you both, like, have, like, we both do the whole peace sign thing. 
And so it's funny because I just yeah. feel like you're like the um like the like the male version of me, but you love yellow and you're you storytell better than me to me. <laughs> you storytell better than me. <laughs> I don't know about oh, that. Yeah. I mean, your storytelling's great. I don't know. I'll always hype you up though. Cause if it wasn't for you and like, oh, you know, other you. people, I really don't think I'd be, you know, creating content. <laughs> oh my. I I'm glad you're making content because, I mean, it's something I listen to in, like, the background because you have a very soothing and calming voice that it's, like, I feel zen and I can just not feel stressed, but I can still, like, learn from, like, the stressful situations of your sims or, like, what's happening in that moment, but still, like, feel relaxed, you know? I'm smiling super hard. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. I just, I think there's like, when people watch creators, like there's always like different things that stand out to them for that creator or for like the certain content that they're watching that they can kind of pinpoint the reason why they watch them and the reason why they kind of feel like they feel safe and relaxed or certain certain like type of emotion that they're feeling at that moment that they can definitely express to that set creator on social media or through the comments on YouTube or on Twitch that it's definitely very nice and like reassuring to know that people feel a certain way. Yeah. I think like that's what makes YouTube purposeful for me because I want to feel like in some way, shape or form, I don't want to feel like I'm necessarily entertaining people all the time. I do want to feel like I'm I'm making someone's day a little bit better or something just more purposeful than than just being a content creator and, you know, just entertaining. I don't want to just entertain. I want to vibe, you know. So I love mm-hmm. that. I love that you said that because that's very true. Yeah. I think the key thing is just vibing and just going about it with your day and just being yourself. Yeah. Well, the next question I have is, so this is about personal versus online life. It's like from the outside looking in, it looks like you have your life all together and you're managing things like perfectly fine with, you know, being a mom and a wife and a content creator. I'm like, that's like a, that's a full-time job. Being a mom and a wife is a full-time job, I would yes, think. It is. like <laughs> It's a lot. But like, how do you manage it so like so well like just how you just manage it in general that's such a good question because when I first started YouTube I did not manage it well like I did not manage it well the way that I manage it well now is I just have to remember that at the very end of the day because sometimes online life can consume our lives like like how we talked about before Mm -hmm. we feel like we have to check our social platforms we feel like if we go too long without uploading people are going to forget all about us and you know like I just, you know, so it goes back to what we've been talking about this whole time. I have to have that confidence as a creator to just know why I'm doing it and still place my family first. Like I have a designated time frame where I work on things and then I spend the rest of that time with my kids because at the very end of the day, as much as I love my online presence and I love, love my community, my kids and my actual family and personal life come first. And sometimes I think even as creators, I think we forget to even go outside and get air sometimes, you know, like we, (laughs) yeah. do you do that? Like you ever have a period of time where you just realize like you're really consumed? Like, yeah, 100% every single day. It's terrible. Cause I'm like, how do I... Like, how do you, like, like, I forget, I'm like, wait, I need to go outside. I haven't seen the sun in, like, five days. Exactly. So, it's like, I need to step away from the computer and just, like, talk to my family and, like, talk to my friends. Like, whether I'm, like, when it was safe going out and about or just, like, just talking to them on, like, Discord or, or whatever. Because we sometimes forget that we don't always have to be, like, on. We have personalized and we have to, you know, main, like, maintain. Yeah, that's- the, the relationship that yeah, we have. That's the word, like, maintaining. Like, there is a period of time. Well, like, recently, even recently, just my experience, like, I realized that my online presence was becoming too much. Like, you know, I needed to step away. And at that point, mm-hmm. and again, everything's assigned to me. And so, you know, I had people in my life that I hadn't spoke to in, like, a couple of days. All hit me up, like, yesterday. They all, they texted me, they called me, and it was so weird and random. And it was almost like the universe was just like, you have people that love you outside of all this you know don't forget about them because I'm the only content creator in my family me and my husband we're like the only content creators in our family so no one understands what we're doing you know Mm -hmm. so but like you said you have to maintain what's outside of that yeah because when people don't understand it gets kind of confusing and it feels like you're neglecting them but in reality you're not really neglecting you just I don't know it's it's definitely hard to kind of explain to certain people who 
somewhat don't understand or like kind of understand, but doesn't really want to really like understand it you know that's that's the thing it's like people think you're neglecting but it's like gosh i'm not neglecting you but by the time i'm done with this video i've used up all my personality and my voice that i have no energy and it's like out of sight out of mind (laughs) yeah and like for me i'm like i'm the only like content creator in my family as well like my mom makes content and Mm. stuff but like i'm like the person who's like really like making all this content on almost every single platform and my family doesn't really know what I really do or like how I do things like they don't understand sometimes but I have to explain to them and I explain it to them on like a business side of things because I think that's what they kind of resonate more to of like what they've grown up to and kind of learned as they went and I think when you kind of talk to them on like on a business standpoint it's like okay it makes sense I make money from YouTube I make money from Twitch I make money from the internet it's all pretty much the same thing but in like a different like way of living. Yeah, that's and that's so true because I think people would see, oh, he's playing video games and making money off of it, that this is a dream job. But I realized very quickly that this is work. Like no matter how you look at it, it's fun. Yes, it has its perks. We're, you know, grateful, but it is work. I mean, it's work. <laughs> it it's definitely a lot of work. It's not mm-hmm. easy. And I think what people need to know is that if they want to get into like this space of the internet, whether it's like gaming or anything, is that don't go, don't have the mindset of thinking, oh, I'll just post a video, get a million views, all this money will come through, I'll get all these sponsorships. No, you have to work for it. It's like interacting with people, you know, you gotta, you got to definitely be on social media, not all the time, but you know, make sure you're like somewhere on social, like what's a presence and being known and like collaborating and just like kind of stepping out of your comfort zone to make yourself grow and successful. And, and I think that's why I, for me, where I can't put all my eggs in one basket for YouTube, where I could expand myself out into other platforms like Twitch or TikTok or Instagram or having a podcast. Like there's so many different things that people can do to make them make themselves successful in a way that makes them feel happy or where they can find the most joy. This is, such good. This, this is so it's this is such a good conversation to have. I feel like it's so relevant to everyone, even if you aren't a content creator and you just want to become a content creator. Like this conversation is so necessary. I love it. That's yeah. so true. <laughs> me, me too. I, I think that's why I started this just because I think, one, I haven't seen my friends or talked mm-hmm. to my friends in a very long time. But also I think it's something that people don't really get to like see or hear because being a content creator or just being a person in general, you only technically see like that one side of that person. Like you see your best friend, you, you've been best friend for like so many years that you only see one side of them sometimes where they don't really share all of yeah. their life, what's going on. And I think when you kind of talk about it, you kind of get more of an understanding or like some way you can like resonate to it or you can like understand why they don't share things or why they uh, do a certain thing this way and not that way. And I think with this podcast, it's like where people can listen to it, whether, you know, they've watch you or somebody else that they can understand why your content's this way or you show yourself in the in this type of light yeah you know I love that and I think like I don't know I think there is like a kind of comfort just hearing like a more like raw version of what we try to explain in like a seven sentence tweet you know we could say like gosh like this YouTube analytics are this way but we're explaining why we feel that way and it's just like interesting. Yeah. I agree. Like I feel, I feel um, like I said, like even walking away from the conversation, I feel like as a creator, I feel, I don't know. I feel like I want to create. I feel like I want to like <laughs> record a video right now and whatever <laughs> I want. You know what I mean? Like it, it's nice to talk to your peers. It's nice. Yeah. Cause like we all can relate to it cause we do the same yeah. thing. And it's like very reassuring to know that people feel the same way or like somewhat similar to it that it's like, oh, it all makes sense now. I don't have to feel this way. That's my epiphany. I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm like stressed. Like, I mean, I've had like really stressful times like where you just feel so low. And then you're like, you know what? You got to pick myself back up because I have people watching me. I have a job to do. I have I have content to create. So I can't really sulk. Can't really feel bad for myself, you know? And it's, 
it is, um, I never thought to really even just talk about this in depth like this with my peers. So it's kind of cool to talk about it with mm-hmm. you. Yeah, same. I feel more like relaxed. And I think these are like ther- therapy sessions. Like I remember I made a tweet saying like doing this podcast feels like I should be a therapist or something. Cause <laughs> yes, Dr. Springs. Like, Sims. I'll be wild. <laughs> I'd rather get the title and not do all the oh, schooling. No, no we don't want to put you through school again. You you work too hard. Mm-mm. Six years of school. Oh, I don't no. Know how you did it. That's a full time job in itself, too. School is a job. It was. <laughs> I even explained that in the second episode, I think. I don't know. Just because I think a lot of people don't understand. Like, I've said it in videos, but I think not everyone watches the full length of videos. That I think with a podcast is easier to listen to and kind of under like fully understand like how a person's feeling and can kind of like again resonate with it. I feel like that too, and I feel like when you can actually hear, you can hear the person's voice. You obviously have more time to say how you feel, and it resonates better than in a little short tweet or something like that or in a video yeah. where like you said they may not even go to the end of the video where you're like spilling out your personal life <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That, this is such a good idea and I just love that you finally like got around to starting your podcast yeah me too like would you like ever continue your podcast if you had to a chance to be honest when you um you sent me the art for your for the podcast and All of a sudden, that's when that same question popped in my mind. Like, I am definitely open to it um, when I have the time. And I want to plan it, like, as professionally as you did. Like, before, I was just like, yeah, I'll do a podcast. I'll I'll make a topic, you know. I'll just do a video or whatever, you know, but like to see how serious you've taken it. It's on like Apple, Spotify too, I think. Yeah, I I made sure it was literally everywhere. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> like, because I think everyone like has their own like personal platform that they listen to or read anything. Then I'm like, I want to make it widely known and like widely spread as much as possible. I don't have, I don't care what I have to go through. I will make the length just to do it. Like the fact that it's on Audible of all yeah, places is that's what wild. And that's why I was like, wow. Like when you asked me that, I'm like, you know, you doing this inspired me to say, you know, if this is something I want to do, I want to do it the right way. You know, I want to do it and really put effort yeah. into it and and take it where you've taken it. Like, it's so professional. It's so exciting. Like, I can't wait to watch, you know, or listen to the episodes. And honestly, I feel like it's it's so relaxing because you're not watching something. You're just listening to it. So I can, like, fold clothes while I listen to you talk about whatever, you know? Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited, yeah. too. Like, I honestly, I thought of this idea, like, two years ago. And I was like, I'm just going to do a podcast, you know, just like what you said, like, just just record it and yeah. just like have a topic. <laughs> And I think at that time, I was like, I don't really know. And I was like, kind of not really excited for it at first, but I was excited. And I've always had like wanting to launch it on my birthday every year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to do it that way. But then things came up, like then the show came up and then other YouTube things came up. And I was just like too overwhelmed that I just couldn't do it. And I think now was like the time. It was. Yeah, like I'm 25 and it's now like my five year type of plan where I can see myself doing this probably longer than five years. But it's like something that I wanted to have a concrete thing that I can hold myself accountable to. Exactly. And it's so cool that you say that, like, you know, like with your five-year plan and that you just felt like the timing was right. Like, I, I feel like, you know, when you rush things or try to get things done, sometimes the result isn't even what you envision. So like, just from what you have alone just right now, it's like the timing is perfect. 2020 was horrible. 2021, oh, you was. know, you're starting as you're starting a Hello Spring podcast and it's almost just like a breath of fresh air. So I feel like the timing is like divine. Yeah, def- it definitely was. Like this is a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And like in a way, it's it's going to sound bad, but in a way, I'm kind of glad that we were in quarantine in a oh, way. I know exactly what you mean. For me, because yeah. like I, it, it feels good to know that I think I think we all like everyone in general just need like a way to like just step back. Yes. Like oh. it's kind of bad that some people like lost their job and stuff like that and things happen. Mm-hmm. But I think people needed that break of like nothingness, not holding them like accountable to like a job or or like 
a certain project. And I think it gave us that time to just realize what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do things. And so many people started a podcast, launched a business or moved or had a baby or like got married. Like it, there's so many great accomplishments that people have done since in quarantine. And I think we've learned so much of what we can do with restrictions. No, that is so true because as a wife and mom or, you know, and, co- and content creator, yeah. I realized how much, again, everything that we talked about was put into perspective and I gained clarity from being in quarantine. So there were pros like, mm-hmm. um, you know, my husband works from home now, which is like, you know, a blessing in itself. And I feel like I'm more together with my family. And I think that's why I even still create restrictions on how often I upload on YouTube and how often I'm in that world and realm because of the state of the world. So yeah, like things have happened that aren't really that fair. But then there's, like you said, with restrictions and stuff, it made you focus. It made you think. Like it just it made you yeah. have that that solitude, that isolation made you either and probably either made some people sink or swim. And at the end of the day, everyone, you know, of course, will end up swimming and floating to the top. But it definitely put me and they put my life in perspective. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Because like, honestly, I'm kind of glad that I've I graduated before things got a little bit mm-hmm. worse. And I was like thinking to myself, like, oh my goodness. Like thinking back to the like, kids, like I used to work for AmeriCorps mm-hmm. and my mom worked for AmeriCorps too. And she had to like tutor these kids virtually. And I'm like, what oh, is going on? Like I forgot how was kids like your kids like going to school like part time, like we're like in person part time and then online the other time or like all online. I feel like it's so hard oh, goodness, let me tell to you. kind of like <laughs> help them. It is so um <laughs> See, because I don't really share like my private life with my kids and stuff yeah. online. But sometimes I wish people could understand like I am juggling so many titles at once. Like it is so hard because I had to be a teacher like last March. Like all of a sudden I'm a teacher now because I have to, you know, they can't learn as much doing things virtually. That's not how anyone grew up. You know, this is a first for them too. So it's, I love that yeah. you put that empathy with like, you know, the kids because yeah like this is not something that they're used to either and so it definitely put pressure on me it's hard for them it's so sad it is I feel like I feel so bad for them because like I always say kids are the future they're here to learn and grow and try new things and experiment with things that they haven't done before and I, I think what came easy to them nowadays is like a new wave of technology that they're already like when they're first born they're already like oh I I understand technology easy peasy lemon squeezy (laughs) and I think I think what what was hard for them is that it was different and they were used to like seeing people but then like they're seeing it seeing them through a screen but all the time and that's hard I actually limit my kids screen time because being that like I'm a gamer like not gonna lie my kids Mm -hmm. are like spoiled with games because their dad gets them all the games they want and everything and so I have to like we have to limit their screen time because you know we're like the cool parents that are like oh gosh like you know I know you had virtual learning today but yeah you can play your game you know right after school it's we have to restrict them like that's a lot of screen time virtual learning and you know they want to watch tv they want to play games you want to do that I have to restrict all that yeah, I think the key thing is definitely restricting yourself with like screens or anything because I think the more you're on something, the less time you have for an, another thing. And I think because technology is weird, technology is crazy, and we're on it all the time. And I think we have to definitely like 100% limit yourself, like you said. And I have a limiter on my phone Me that too. kind of shuts down all the apps to like go off or like have like limited features where I can't use them Mm -hmm. at a certain time. And it feels so good. It feels so good. I turn on like on my iPhone, like it'll tell me how much screen time I had like each week, like at the end of each week. And if I see it like risen or whatever, for whatever reason, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, I need to, I need to put my phone down. (laughs) <laughs> during this time of day like I do that too I thought that I was see it's so funny because I always feel so like cheesy I just feel like so like cheesy doing stuff like that like restricting myself so I don't really talk about it but you do it too so yeah. it's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> like yeah I'm not alone again yeah I have to do that too because I'm not someone that can remember like if I tell myself don't check your phone I'm gonna end up probably doing it out of habitual behavior so oh yeah 100 percent. yeah like restrictions like- are so important I checked my phone and I looked at what my percentage was or like what like my time. Mm-hmm. It was like on an average of um 
like three hours and two minutes. Like that's absolutely oh insane. God. That's like throughout yeah. the week yes. on average. <laughs> that is a lot. It's, I. But the thing is, I checked each day. And there was like one Pacific day that I had throughout that week on Twitter, six hours throughout the day. Oh That's absolutely insane. I literally do not know what happened, but since leaving the app off my phone and certain apps off my phone, it's become a lot better. I'm sure. So the time should be lower. Yeah, you know, like, oh my God, it's crazy because. I don't. I guess in that sense, I'm kind of glad I have kids because it kind of like automatically keeps me off the phone at certain times of days. Because it, it was, it used to be really bad. Like, like I, I, I can't talk. I, I don't judge you because I used to be on my phone a lot too. <laughs> I got my first phone. I was in sixth grade, and that's when the addiction started. <laughs> my addiction started when I got my um, BlackBerry at the time. Like Blackberries were like in, and I could not stop messaging people. I was more so oh. like a communicator than like a smartphone user. Like I really loved texting for mm. some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I used to text all the time. Now I don't do it anymore. I know. I realize I don't really like to text, and sometimes I don't even like to call people. I. It's yeah. bad. Oh man, I, it's like the li- life is going through waves. Like we start one thing and the. And then we go through another wave, and then another wave is like, it is. what is life right now? Look, when we it's so crazy <laughs> when we get off this call and to make a pack to make sure we we check on our loved ones and maintain our personal life. <laughs> oh, most even yes, more one hundred percent starting to pack right now. <laughs> the other question is, uh, how do you feel about the Sims community? <laughs> this could literally be a podcast in it. This could literally be an episode in itself. That question alone. <laughs> no, <True>. but I <laughs> I think the Sims community, my honest opinion, I think the Sims community is full of passionate, overly passionate people. It's it's beautiful but also destructive in itself. Um Yeah. It's it's the passion. It's the passion. It's it it's so hard to explain. We there's different sides to the Sims community. So you have First and foremost, everyone in the community is passionate, but you have two sides. And I think what side you're on says how that experience in the community will be for you. And so Mm -hmm. there are, you know, different sections of the community that you don't fit in and will never fit in and you don't vibe with them. And it's just the reality of it. But then for the majority, like the other side of the Sims community, it's again full of, at the very end of the day, everyone's passionate about this game for different reasons. Sometimes people take their passion, you know, to be constructive. Others are just really angry and, and rightfully so. It's like, I understand exactly how they feel, you know, but I keep to a certain part of it because I know where I stand. So it's just the experience you make it. Whoever, you know, the Sims community, again, as a whole, it's just this, it's full of passionate, fiery beings in different ways, shapes, or forms. You have your, you know, your your quiet people. You have people that only talk about Sims. You have people that are fighting big issues and, and being the voice, even for the community. There, it's, it's just a passionate, extremely passionate community, you know? It is. It definitely is very passionate. Like, we're... 21 years strong. We're very passionate about literally 20, everything. Yes, we are. 21 years strong. We are passionate. I mean, I see even when I love like seeing the constructive criticism because um, there are things that people will point out that I never realized or felt like I was missing. And then they say something and I'm like, oh, wow, that is true. But how we all use our platform, I feel like doesn't define the social, doesn't define the Sims community. Like the Sims community yeah. is, a, it's an awesome community, but the way that some of some people use their social platform may not be so pleasant to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, so, and I think that's why I uh, definitely kind of delete things off of my phone me for too. those certain reasons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to protect your peace. But, you have to. Yeah, definitely. It's it's like something that we definitely people need to do more often, I would say, because like the more you kind of, again, restrict yourself, um, the better. Yeah, it's crazy because it wasn't even always like that. I don't know if it's because we are in the state of the world that it makes people think more about the issues that, you know, have always mattered to them, but it may, it fires up the mass, like the masses. It like fires yeah. up everyone. Like I, I could not care that we don't have cars and someone bring it up and suddenly I'm like, God, we really do need cars. You know, it's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's just energy. It's a bunch of energy. Energy that sometimes we need and don't need yeah, at the same time. You but- know. 
yeah, but again, it like it depends on like what side you stand on and all that stuff. But it truly like, makes you think. Yeah, and that's why I think it's cool. Like for instance, someone like you, you're you maintain your um, who you are and like you know your brand and what you stand for. You know, you don't get too caught up in your surroundings. And I think because I am like a sponge. I'm mean, very palatable. Like some, I feel like I I get caught up sometimes in in things that I don't even really need to say anything on. You know, like some, it's just energy, mm-hmm. and it's because again, I am a very like I'm a sponge. I absorb everything. It's so bad. I used to be like that, but now I'm like, uh, okay, oh. what's next? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's what um, I need. I think over time, I've just learned what to like. I mean, like I, I care about a lot of things, but I think I've learned to like care about things that are more important to me Mm -hmm. and what I think is something that I feel like I need to share to people. Right. Um, I think it's kind of boils down to just like, just like in general of uh, like how I grew up and like also just like in making videos for like nearly a decade (laughs) that I think it's, I've learned to do certain things a different way than like certain way that people expect me to say. Uh. Well, the last question before the rapid fire questions, <laughs> <laughs> what are your tips for beginners wanting to get into creating content on YouTube? Like it could be Sims or it could just be just in general. Mm. I think we like, I think we spoke about all that. Like we gave so many, so much good advice, but truthfully, no, I'm just kidding. We, being yourself, really starting off in um, creating because you want to and because you're passionate about what you're creating. It can't be for gain. You know, I didn't go, I did not come into YouTube thinking like, like you said, like, oh, I'm going to make money. I'm going to get this and that. When you do that, your results kind of show that you have, you know what I mean? You have to be passionate. You have to really love what you're doing because it's going to make you consistent. If you enjoy it, you'll be consistent. And consistency is a huge part of your growth. And, you know, and then being, um, being yourself, whatever that is and stand in your truth. Like Urban Sims, I were, was I was like me and her were always talking because I was so confused with YouTube. I was so like I bothered her with all my insecurities. <laughs> Shout out to you, Jen, if you ever listen to this. But um, you know, have some type of confidant. You know, reach out to your peers. So, so that's why I bring her up. You know, reach out to your peers. When I reached out to you, I was like, you know, hey, I was going off on a whim. I didn't know if you were going to answer or not, but I was like, hey, I need some streaming help and just try because you might come across someone that is actually like, hey, let me give this person a chance, you know, and let me help them. So I was, I'm always grateful for that. So yeah, like network, be, become, you know, be acquainted with the people that you're working around essentially. And yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's like my two best. That's like my best advice, I think. And then being yourself, like what makes you different? I was, when I was like creating things, I didn't really want to be the same as everyone else because I didn't want to copy anyone and I wanted to be myself. So when you do something that's really different, you know, just how can you inspire other people? Like what can you bring to YouTube that we haven't seen already? Right, exactly. Like just, again, what makes you like, what makes you different? Definitely like, just like do things that, what you enjoy making, what you think what stand you out from the crowd that you would make people excited to watch your videos or just literally Mm -hmm. anything like just make content for the sake of not just for content but make content for you and for yourself and people will eventually resonate with that because there's been videos that I've seen from people that I didn't even know because it stand it standed out to me but also the YouTube algorithm picked it up and like oh, I see all these things, but then I hop on Twitter and I see all these amazing creators and like, they're doing so well. Why don't people watch them more? Mm -hmm. But I think the key thing is like definitely like being yourself is like being yourself, being consistent and like show your true light that will stand you out from the crowd. Yeah. And I, I, I definitely believe like I'm a firm believer in like whatever you put out in the universe, you will most definitely receive it back in some way, shape or form. So yeah, like don't give up. Just keep doing all the things that we just listed. And I feel like those are like the keys to success. I feel like when you don't even expect success, you like get it. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely very weird. I don't understand it. I'm just like going with the flow at this point of like making videos. I'm like, I'm just going to go as I please and see what happens yeah. and hope for the best. Yeah, you know, and then when you when when you see like a little bit of growth and that's where the, the business mindset comes in. You're like, all right, how can I take it to the next level? And always do the same things that we just mentioned like not too long ago. So, yeah. 
Well, I have some rapid fire questions. This first one might not be rapid fire, but I always ask this, ask this for my guests. Mm-hmm. What's the best life advice you've gotten? Oh my goodness. I have gotten a lot of life advice, especially for my dad. Um, I've, I have a lot of life advice. If we ever have another episode on this podcast, you have to ask me that question again because I might say something different. But off the top of my head mm-hmm. right now, the only thing I can think of is when my dad told me a long time ago, choose your friends. Don't let your friends choose you. And so it's almost like watch the company you keep. Who you're around also represent you, you know? Choose who you're around. Like, don't let people choose you because when I was in high school, I was so easy influ- like influenced. And, you know, mm-hmm. you don't want to... That goes back to creating. You know what I mean? Choose who you network with. Choose who who you're friends with. You know, if you don't hang out in a bad crowd kind of thing, you know, like, choose, yeah, because yeah, who you're around, like you are who you are around sometimes. People think that if you're a part of this one group that you stand, you have the same beliefs that they have. And that may not be the case. So choose your friends. Don't let them choose you. Don't let them kind of like identify you and what you do. Choose the company that you keep. That's just off the top of my head, though. That's some really good life advice. Like, (laughs) honestly, very good. Oh, man. I can see where you kind of get the inspiration, the depth, the relaxation, zen, (laughs) like, knowledgeable side. That's what I think. Yeah. And then there's one more. Hold on, wait. And the Rocky movie, Rocky Balboa, he says, it's not how many times, it's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you get back up. I use that. Till this day. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. I love Rocky. You do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. I got to go back and watch, like, the movies and stuff and everything. The fact that you love this movie. And when I tell people that's my favorite movie, they're like, oh, okay, Rocky, sure. And you love that? What? Like, like, it, like, it has, like, some, like, I always look at movies as, like, a deeper, like, it has, like, a deeper meaning mm-hmm. to it. Like, it's, like, the general story, but I feel like it's just more to it that I want to definitely learn more about. So, like, it, it definitely like, resonates with me, too. Nice. See, this yeah. is why we're friends. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite music group at this moment? Oh, my God. My favorite music group? Yeah, or, like, genre. Okay, let's do genre, because if I think of music group, I'm t- I'm going all the way back to, like, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Jagged Edge. Oh I'm going all gosh. the way back to Destiny's Child. So, I don't know, because I don't listen to, like, music groups. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I think genre wise, I love lo fi music. And oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Same. Yeah, like that's that's something I listen to every day cooking, cleaning, laundry, driving my kids to school while I'm editing videos. That's my genre. Oh, <laughs> yes. Do you listen to Chill Cow on oh YouTube? Oh my God, yes. And their aesthetic is so beautiful. Like sometimes I, I choose what I want to listen to based on the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, same. yeah. It's so relaxing. Like, I could sleep to this day, at noon, and Me night. Too. Oh, man. I love Chill Cow. I do, too. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, when you're not working, what? how do you spend, how do you like to spend your time? When I'm not working, I like to, me and my kids, we like to play games like Uno. Sometimes I watch, like, we watch movies together. Me and my husband, oh. like, um, we're watching Netflix. I am on Pinterest because I'm someone that likes to like save a bunch of recipes that I'll probably never make, but I like to look at them Mm -hmm. for reference and save them. And yeah, I just kind of like chill to myself. Sometimes I try to not not even be on the screen. Like, I don't know. I just do mom stuff. To be honest with you, in short, I do mom stuff. Laundry, hanging out with my kids, my husband. That's it. I'm really boring life. So do I. But no, that's a really, I would say it's that's a great life. Just uh, definitely just. uh, It is kind of wind down and hang out with your family because family means everything to me. I am a family person, family like person. I love hanging out with my parents a lot, watching movies. I can tell. Just chilling out. When you, you dropped that video for your, we both had the Black History Month video opportunity that we did. And when I watched yours, it was inspired by your own family. And you talking about your parents, it's so fitting. Like it, just knowing that the, those are the people, I guess, essentially that in theory raised you. I just I love that. Like, I love that you had that close family. Like, I love that that's your dynamic. Like, you love hanging out with your parents because I love hanging out with my dad. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's fun. Like me and my dad play video games together. And like me and my mom, we just we just talk a lot and we just do everything. Basically, I've been by our hip literally all my life. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we go to places, we do things together and like. All of us together, we all sit down at the couch and watch movies or TV shows. Like right now, we are just like 
every single Friday, we know it's WandaVision. So. <laughs> you know it's WandaVision. <laughs> Wait, so... So we're just currently watching... Are you, like, an only child? Like, do you have any siblings or no? I have... Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have four other siblings. I have four older brothers. Uh, two on my mom's side and two on my dad's side. But, like, the thing is, I only met one of them like we I did not grow up with oh, them I see. so so like we're all like a I would say like a blended family in a way and um I've only met one of my brothers in per actually no two of my brothers in mm. person and the other two I have not met at all I know what they look like I know what they sound like but I've never really like met them but one day um when the world's safe I'll be able to meet them one day oh. but for the most part um it was great because, like, I was like, I literally was like, it's the time. Like, I was going to invite them all. They all said yes to my graduation, but then it just COVID, COVID happened. happened, and it was just weird. So, wow, it didn't it didn't go as planned. But that is so for the most part, it's been pretty good. That's cor- that's yeah. See, because I I figured um, that's first of all, it's crazy all the boys in your family because I have three boys. I don't even know if I ever told you that mm-hmm. I have three boys. So it's like. I'm overruled here. So it's so funny that you just have brothers and I have half siblings too. So that's kind of interesting. That was, I never knew that about you. (laughs) I thought you were an only child. Yeah. I don't really share that part of my life anyway, just because like, you know, same people like to express their opinion about stuff and about like, just like in general, like Mm -hmm. to like to my mom's side, to my dad's side. So it's like people think things and all that stuff. And like, cause I don't want my family to be torn up or anything or just have, people coming down my Me throat neither. especially on facebook <laughs> exactly yeah that see no, no. yeah no we do, we don't want that that's why when you shared that with me i'm like oh my god i have half siblings too you know obviously i'm like you know they're my siblings but i have half siblings too like so essentially yeah. i grew up in the same environment where i kind of felt like the only child because i wasn't really yeah. yeah like it's the same thing it's the same thing <laughs> Yeah, i told people i was the only child just because you know it was yeah, easier it's complicated. but also <laughs> Because, like, I've, the thing is, like, I've had my mom and my dad by my side all my life, never, like, moved mm-hmm. away besides, like, going to college for, like, that one year and then came back. But, like, I've always been by their side. They've always had me. And I think sometimes it's kind of hard, but I also, like, it's like that only child syndrome, even though I wasn't an only child. Same. I, I, it's like, I have only, only so child weird. syndrome, too. Oh, man. Yeah. And I was like, I, I feel so alone. My parents are never home. Yeah. But it was weird. See, that's that's a topic for another. That, that is a topic. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. De- we got to definitely talk about this in another know, episode right? for There's sure. There's just so much. I could literally ramble all day. <laughs> Same. Um, so the last question, though, how do you define success? That is a good question. Um... So success to me, it definitely correlates with your happiness. And it has nothing, nothing to do with numbers. It used to mean, for me, back then it was about numbers, like with anything, whether how much money you had, how big your house was, you know, things like that. But for me, mm-hmm. I realized in life that I'm like almost like this. My my family likes to call me like the hippie of the family. Success for me is just having the bear, like having what you need and kind of flourishing in that. You know, like I might not have the biggest house, but I have a family and and other people may not have family. You know, um, I don't have the mm-hmm. best car. I don't have a million subscribers. I don't have it all, but at the same time, I have it all. Uh, like, so, so success mm. is just how happy your life is at any, at, like at any given moment, how happy and satisfied you are with what you have. If you are if you can live a life where you literally just live in that present moment, you're successful. Like you really have this peace of mind. Peace of mind is a form of success to me. It really just has no, no definition, I guess. It's really just how happy you are in your life at that present time. Like that's all I want. I think my what I mean is like success for me is me getting to a point where only today matters, you know? Yeah. And that that's good because I, I agree with you as well. It definitely is like success is like, when you're the happiest. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, what you overcame, you know, no one's like, oh my God, I'm so successful because I was really sad yesterday. It's just like, I was sad, but then I did this and I got, and you know, I was happy again. So it does, like your happiness does play a role in your success. Like if you had money, but you aren't happy, that's not really successful, you know? So yeah, yeah I, I, 
I think that's what it means to me. Actually, I've never even thought about like really what it means to me. So explaining it now, I'm like, wow, I guess I am successful because I am happy. <laughs> and I, and I yeah. you know, like I am grateful for all I have. That's that's good. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> this has been a definitely a very like impactful, I would say a very impactful episode because this is episode three. Oh <laughs> You're like... You're like the first like guest that people will hear on the podcast. So, wow. Wow. So much knowledge. Wait, so what's episode one and two? Just me. Just talking. I'm the first guest. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So excited. Because I, cause like you were the first one that I reached out to that I knew I went on the podcast. Like, oh, I'll just, I'll put Ocean at episode three and then, you know, the other ones down the line, of course, and then kind of get into it and then... uh because I think it's like all where I, w- I wanted to do is like research on all of them, on everybody and kind of pinpoint certain things that makes them them, mm-hmm. but also kind of kind of go deeper into that of what kind of really happens and like kind of understand what people don't get to see, you know? I love that. No, like this has been so therapeutic. Okay. <laughs> It has been so therapeutic because even just right now I needed, again, everything happens for a reason to me because I'm just so like, everything's a sign. And having this conversation today, it's more than just a podcast. It really, really was something I needed to just talk about, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. I agree. So where can the listeners find you you can find me at youtube.com slash ocean sims um you can also find me on twitter ocean sims underscore and those are my main things just find me on youtube youtube is my my safe haven so youtube ocean sims check me out awesome well thank you again for being on my podcast talking with me and just definitely just supplying just or I don't know, (laughs) but like just giving like giving so much knowledge that you have had like over the years and just being a mom, a wife, just a person in general and just just being you. So thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I literally like we had to do this again. That was fun. Well, this was fun. I mean, yeah. Well, I will see you later. See you later. Bye -bye. Bye. So I hope you all enjoyed today's episode with Ocean Sims. I definitely did. I had a lot of fun just talking to her about content creation, imposter syndrome, the Sims community, the Sims in general, and being a mom, a wife, and a content creator all at the same time. But also kind of just playing catch up too, because we haven't really talked to each other in a very long time. And I think it's definitely a way where we can relate on a deep and personal level of how we're feeling, but also how we handle things in a new day and age of 2021. But we did say a few things towards the end of the episode that I did want to do a bit of a recap that I find very, very important for you all to listen, is that if you want to get into the creator space of making content on YouTube or any platform, whether it's for The Sims or any genre of content wise is to focus on being your true and most authentic self because when you are yourself that's when your true light really shines and allows you to resonate better with your audience and they can relate to you because everyone wants to see the real honest moments of who you really are how you make your content because no one's perfect no one wants a cookie cutter lifestyle of things because that's not really real but also consistency because consistency is key, allowing you to post content when you are the most happiest. But also how we define success is when you are the most happiest in your life. And that really means a lot to the both of us where we are somewhat similar in a way where we find success in when we are the most happiest and we make content when we are the most happiest. Because when we're not happy, we can't really let our true light really shine of who we are as a content creator, but also as a person. Because we create our content based on our emotions, but also based on how we're feeling And we want to make sure that our space of YouTube is a place where people can feel safe and relax and can definitely relate and resonate to it in any shape or form. But that's kind of the thing that I wanted to recap on you on. And I think it's definitely very important to definitely keep that in mind that we are real people, but we also have personal lives that we like to keep private sometimes. But in all in all, that being said, I do hope you all definitely enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. 
And make sure you follow and subscribe to me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I will hear from you all next week. 